have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give them your money. You still have to give up your property. You still have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice of what to do with your own money, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes, Yeah. right? So that's how this organization, this matrix, this one organization only knows how to solve problems then to one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus though the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. So what are your thoughts on that? Good stuff, man. Yeah? Yeah, those are good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> who's that, who's that? Yeah, I mean, that's that. really, that's how government is immoral, right? And okay. in our day-to-day lives, we don't use violence to solve our problems. Government, on the other hand, this organization only knows how to solve problems through violence. Okay. Right? Through threats of use of violence, right? If you don't do what I say, I'll throw you into a cage, right? Okay. If you resist and try to escape, I'll initiate the, the escalation of violence uh, even still. Yeah. Um, so what government then is uh, objectively, I guess, what, what is your idea uh, when people talk about government? What, what comes to mind? I don't know much about government. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, all right, that's, all right so objectively it's then. Like laws and stuff. Laws and stuff, okay, yeah, all right, cool. Yeah. Um, I had a question yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you think the solution is? All right, so the solution is uh, to act, I guess, uh, with that more integrity that we already have, right? I don't use violence to solve problems in my life. I like to live accordingly. I would like to live a virtuous life. I have to not live a, a life that's uh, inconsistent with that, right? I want integrity, right? To advocate for politics, to advocate for, for politics and politicians is the opposite of that, right? Uh, we, we don't need government. So what all government is, objectively, they have a monopoly on the things you and I want. I want rules too, like laws are mentioning, so right? How would they, they be enforced? Uh, all right, so how, how would laws be enforced then? Yeah. All right, so they'll be enforced by you giving explicit consent to those rules, right? So you don't have... There exists, for example, no factual evidence you can show me a contractual relationship with government, right? Okay. Show me your contract with the police. But you can show me your contract with Netflix, with AT&T, with your mortgage payments, all, all, all these other real business services that anytime you don't like it, you can cancel, unsubscribe, and go somewhere else, okay. right? Or you can compete entrepreneurially to okay. say, you know what, I could provide a better service of law, better service of security. But with government, they have a monopoly on these services, and it's illegal and criminal for people to compete. It's illegal and criminal for you to cancel or opt out, not pay your taxes, to try to cancel and subscribe, right? Okay. Uh, so the solution would be to turn away from that and start here at the individual level with our own interpersonal relationship to kind of live with that life of integrity, right? We don't use violence to solve our problems. Let's reject that organization that only knows how to solve problems through violence, right? Okay. Um, so how would you solve something like, like what would the consequence of robbing someone would be? All right, cool. All right, so yeah. uh, so all right, so what exists right now, Virginia, for example, is one large monopoly community. If you didn't have that, you have thousands of competing communities catering to your lifestyle and preferences. So you can have one that's 420 friendly, one next door that's not. Okay. Right, like moving to apartment complex, cats okay, dogs not allowed. Right. Okay. Uh, and so you can have real rules that you give explicit consent to. Right. All right, I agree. No cats here. I agree. No cannabis here. Uh, maybe it's not for me. I'm going to go live next door. I agree to those rules. So you give real explicit consent. You have a real contract to yeah. the consequences. Right. If you have cats here, that'll be two hundred dollar fine. All right. I I agree to that rule. Okay. Yeah. Right. I understand your point. Yeah. Like for example, um, what 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 would the like how, how would someone robbing someone like how would how would he be all right so so someone yeah, in here yeah. who commits uh there's a contract rule in this uh gated community that says uh no you know stealing allowed hey my bad i got caught uh here's the consequences i pay restitution right uh here's some options that i've agreed i could pay restitution uh reparation uh for for me getting caught uh you know in the contract it said maybe it's a 300 dollar fine in addition to right but you agree to to how that consequences will be carried out but you don't know the consequences you agree to the consequences no, before. I didn't. uh oh, the, rob yeah, the robber yeah the robber yeah the only, yeah, the the only way that the robber is in there is because he lives there oh so no one can leave out no one can leave the community well you can yeah uh, just like uh you could travel to like a mall and they have rules too so every community you enter you have to go over the they the have rules right yeah you go look at the rules so you know what all right like i'm not going to go into a gated community that doesn't like cannabis and smoke on their properties right okay but the moment i go in there i just agree to the rules i just got caught right uh and so let's resolve this dispute right that's what's all we're doing trying to resolve these disputes so right can you argue the other way around as in um someone sneaking in no no, no as uh. in as in right now uh virginia is a whole gated community and anyone who smokes cannabis in virginia gets cool all right and then I, and then you know the way I mean? yeah and then i would say show me your contract with that legal service right you don't have one okay right I and a free market saying. site you can have contracts right okay. here it is i gave okay. a consent to right okay yeah under government 
Uh, so government then is cohesive, oppressive, top down, mm. and a free society is consensual, contractual. Okay, I see what you're saying. Right? Okay, that makes sense. Right now, yeah, now it's like you know what? I don't like cannabis. Great. Here's a community of people who don't like it too. Okay. I like it. I'm gonna go live right here next door. I could see you at the mall. You know, we're not really paying attention where we're from. We go to malls or when we go to like uh, outdoor places of venues like shops. Right? I'm only concerned about what the what the new sell is. Right? Or uh, you know, is this for sale? Is there a discount for this? Right? We wouldn't really pay attention to preferences. Mostly, you have the, that attention is really when you're at home. Like you have rules, I would imagine if someone went into your room, right? Okay. No shoes allowed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's essentially what it'll be. But it'll be real explicit consent to these rules. Okay. Right. You don't have that explicit consent with government rules. Uh, right. So Doesn't exist. Got you. All right. And that's the illusion. That's where we're tricked into believing that they have that. Um, one big startling one, though, would be. The Supreme Court has ruled many times, for example, that the cops have no obligation to provide you security. None. They have no constitutional obligation or duty to provide you security, to protect your life, your property, or your freedom. None. So now think about it. You're being forced now to pay for a service in which they don't have to provide. If someone came to our house with such a contract, you're like, get the hell out of here, right? This, yeah. You know, this is shenanigans. This is a scam, right? Yeah. You tell them to get off your lawn. But that's what they're presenting here. That's what the government offers. Right, so you don't have the freedom though to cancel and subscribe against that monopoly. So, um, if I break the contract, who's gonna stop me? If you what? If I break the contract, if you break who's the contract, stop me. Uh, like what if I'm a rebel? Oh, all right, like you live in a community, it's like you know what? I don't want to agree to this. Perfectly fine. No, no, like, like, like I'm in the community. They say no cannabis. <laughs> I smoke cannabis. Okay. What are you gonna do? Uh, well, I say, hey, you just, uh, I would say, you just broke one of the rules here. Here's the consequences. I say no. No, okay, that's fine. So here's here's what ends up happening. In the event you ever have a dispute with somebody, uh, they're gonna say, well, you need to resolve that dispute first, right? If you have a conflict with someone else over any issue, uh, and, and you want to resolve that legally, they'll say, well, you need to resolve that first. We can't, we don't want to risk, you know, uh, associating ourselves with people who break contracts all the time, right? Because okay. everything is voluntary and consensual. Uh, the bakery owner would say, you know what, I don't think I could risk selling you bread because you don't keep your contract, you don't keep okay. your word, right? Yeah. So you, in a way, you get you socially ostracize yourself economically. No one has to Just provide you service. a bad record. Right, okay. right. So it's like, do you really want to go back to a house after that with no electricity? Because it's voluntary, no water. Uh, no internet, <laughs> right? Yeah. Starting from the very basic, because no one has to provide you this, right? And people don't really want to associate themselves with uh, people who go out there uh, to break stuff, you know, just to be an asshole, okay? Right? Uh, so, it's, so it behooves you then, you know, the cost benefit is, is really to abide by my word, right? To abide by my contract. Yeah, I agree to that. All right, you know what? Cool, I just wanted to check it out. Just testing the waters, <laughs> okay? Right? Uh, and that's how you pretty much enforce yourself, because no one's going to enforce it onto you. Because if you don't like it, you don't have to, that's perfectly fine. But no one also has to do business with you, right? And a lot of businesses, you know, wouldn't want to uh, make it known that they uh, interact with thieves. Yeah. Right? With murderers. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? Okay. Yeah, I see, how, I see how it all works. So, um, so what if... Oh, what are, what are some cons? Like, what do you think? Cons are some flaws of this method. Like, honestly, like, do you, do you find do you have do you find any flaws or cons in this uh, type of new government? You're oh, so it wouldn't even be called a government. Or uh, just yeah, new, um, yeah, it's just a free society. Uh, yeah, the yeah, free yeah. Society. Is there is there any setbacks? Do setbacks. Limits freedom. Anyhow, not at all. Because it's everything. More freedom. Yeah, it's consensual. It's voluntary. Uh, you give explicit consent, right? At any time you don't like it, you can cancel and subscribe. That's the best freedom you can have. The freedom to give permission and withdraw that at any time. Um, right? Who would provide for the poor? Uh, like, with the food stamps. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. So that, that's a great question. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, what another area in which government has a monopoly is on money. They have a monopoly on currency, yeah. right? The dollar, for example. Yeah. When government monopolized that, before that, there used to be a lot of different kinds of currencies. Okay. It was like, whenever you have competition, uh, the cost goes down and the quality improves, right? Yeah. I may not be able to afford uh, an iPhone 6, but I could get an iPhone 3 now, right? Uh, so you can kind of look at uh, what it was before and what you have today. The dollar has lost 97% of its value. Devastates the poor. No incentive to save. Every dollar that the poor hide underneath their mattress, depreciation value. Like the purchasing value of the dollar is gone, right? They're already on a tight budget to begin with. So abolishing the government also abolishes their monopoly on currency, which frees up then a market of like real precious metals, real different kinds of, uh, I don't know, let, let the market and how to uh, transactions can be done that way. You know, solve that th themselves, right? Uh, the fact that you ask yourself, what about the poor implies that we care about the poor, yeah. right? I care about the poor, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, we, there'll still be non-profit organizations, there'll still be 
like many of the dozens of food banks here in Richmond that goes out so every could, week. You could, people are going to take care of the poor. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And that's how actually it used to be before Medicaid and Medicare, before Social Security. They were called friendly societies. Uh, if you Google that one word, you'll come across a history of how all these wave of immigrants came together, African Americans, Latinos, a lot of uh, uh, people coming here and realized it was kind of too expensive, so they created their own mutual aid societies. And it was, it was great. Property rates were declining. Like if you lost your house, lost your car, wife just died, you don't have to be poor. You can bounce right back up the next day. They have community banks that can kind of get that out, out from. Government, uh, and through legalization and making it, they kind of outlawed that and the whole thing fell apart. And government, I mean, the last thing government wants is for you to be independent, right? They need you to be independent on government for it to work. Right? So they don't have no concern about the poor. They want the poor, because that just means people will then still beg for the government for those services. If they ever solve the problem of poverty, they'll, they'll be out of a job. Right? Uh, so in the past, when we look at examples, how things work today, we want to look how did they work in the past. Because uh, everything did work at one point in time until government monopolized it uh, and took it over, and things just escalated in the opposite direction. Um, Again, go ahead. Um, I have a couple questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you said how would currency work? Yeah. All right, so, so currency, like, uh, have you ever would heard of... Would there be money or no? Yeah, there would be money. Money's a great, so, great so idea who, for easy transaction, yeah. Who, uh, who provides money? Maybe it could be you. Uh, so does every, every uh, community have its own money? Uh, didn't, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it'll be uh, a geographic thing. Maybe it might be, uh, like, have you heard of Bitcoin? No. Digital currency? No. Uh, so digital currency is awesome. So it's like the, the future of money. Um, the government hates it because you can't regulate it because it's, okay. it's online. You, can, you can't see it. It's a, it's a digital currency, I guess, in, in that respect. So what Bitcoin has is a, has a set amount of Bitcoins, 24 million, whereas the government and why it creates inflation is that they can print money anytime they want, okay. right? Uh, so it devalues it even further. So with Bitcoin, there's a set amount of Bitcoins that forever. Um, and you can, uh, I guess, I'll just give you some examples that accept Bitcoin, like Overstock.com. You could buy electronics, you could buy uh, mattresses, you could buy anything on, on, on uh, Overstock. You can uh, Reddit, WordPress. Uh, there's a brewery here right now in Richmond that accepts Bitcoin. Okay. You could buy a flight of beer using Bitcoin. And uh, so I have uh, an app on my phone. I can uh, scan the QR code, transmit it, done. Best thing for, for the poor ever, because you don't need social security, you don't need a bank. Uh, there's no banking fee costs associated with it. So the idea is that when you remove this monopoly, you have a lot of creative ideas that will come in and fill in that void and how money will be presented. Okay. Right? You free up, you end the, the state, you free up the free market of ideas, have a lot of thousands of competing ideas on how to provide good money, good efficient ways to kind of increase that value. Okay. Like different ideas of how to help the poor. Right? Mm -hmm. When nearly half your income is not being robbed anymore through taxes, you have a lot more money to do that with, right? Yeah. Oh, one more question. Um, yeah, man. Would there would there be countries or is no? No, uh, there would just be. Uh, so there wouldn't be an idea of a nation, like right? Like all, all nations would be split up. It would be more of like communities, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Thousands of competing communities. Like you kind of have some of these existing today. You have like your golf course communities. You have in Florida your 55 and older communities, right? Okay. So like, then there's also based on preferences. What, what, right? where, where like the government is not involved in them? Uh, oh, well, they, they, they are. They are. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but so those are kind of examples. Yeah, yeah. So if we remove that, you have thousands. And then, you, and then you have so much to select from. A lot of preference. Right? And so, you okay. know what? And you'll never have to feel, I guess, uh, well, scared or... So, so how, would, how would something like um, like uh, public school work? All right, great. Uh, uh, like, like, or like a university, something for many communities, you know? Right. How, uh, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have their, everyone have their own contract again, I'm guessing? Uh, to abide for the rules for... Uh, yeah, yeah, so they're, 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 you want to have any bullying problems, that's for sure, yeah. right? And it's like all of these random kids come in here and you don't check with their parents to see how if they're being uh, brought up abusively. I don't want to send my kid to a school uh, with that kind of environment, yeah. right? Uh, so you'll have a lot of uh, checks and balances in these schools to kind of prevent that, you know? You'll have insurance causes, you'll have ways to prevent your child from ever being bullied uh, in that kind of environment, right? Uh, and again, government has a monopoly on education. Right. So, like, if you think, uh, like, if you went to a school by Walmart, you know, what kind of education you're going to get there? Walmart education, Walmart values, Walmart ethics. Uh, the presidents on the wall would be Walmart CEOs, right? Okay. And but so government is kind of the same way. So that's why they'll never tell you uh, what I'm talking about right now. Right. Alternative stuff outside from that. One more question. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. This is great. This is good. Um, <laughs> wait, hold on. I don't mind, sorry. Oh yeah. Who, who would who make the contracts? Uh, in charge. Okay, so the great thing about that is that anyone can compete. So if you don't find a community that you like, there's no 
uh, there's no politicians or government for people to lobby against you from competing, right? You don't need a license or permit. Anyone can compete. You know, I have a great idea for a community. I'm going to start a Kickstarter campaign. Who you so talk you, to? Uh, you, you talk to. You could be the I'll entrepreneur. talk to the people of the community. Yeah, you, you could create like a website, a Kickstarter campaign. I'm starting this community. Here's the contract. Here's the rules. Uh, and people just join it. Yeah, people join. You know what? I like the rules. This is very fair. So you can start it. Anyone can compete one. So it's not just who is uh, who, who's entrepreneur enough who feels like uh, they can create something that people want. Right. Okay. Uh, and the great thing about this is, if people feel it's unfair, they can uh, unsubscribe immediately. Like Netflix, tried to raise their prices two years ago. Do you remember that? Yeah. Overnight, and people like, "Fuck that! Cancel and subscribe. I'm going to Hulu." Right. Word, yeah. yeah. And so, and that that's the best thing about the market. You have nice. complete freedom. You're in charge now. You're in control. Okay. Right. So uh, anyone can compete. You can set up any contracts, uh, and that's that's the beauty of the market. So how'd you learn about this? Uh, <laughs> Or is it uh, years, years of. Uh, is, is this, is this like a known idea, or is this? Oh uh, uh, yeah, I guess kind of you or. Uh, uh, I, I guess it's a mixture of uh, a lot, uh, a lot of uh, a nar it's called like anarcho capitalism or free market anarchism. <laughs> Some of these ideas has been around for a long time. Yeah. Uh, combining all of this has been kind of difficult. Okay. Uh, so what, we're, what I'm a part of is Liberate RVA, which is a non-political organization. Okay. So we're, we're trying to return with politics. We're done with uh, government. We're trying to go into to that society together uh, as a community. Okay. Right. But these fundamental values that we already share. I don't use violence to solve my problems. Great, neither do you. Let's move forward in that direction, cool. right? Let's move away from the drone bombing. Let's move away from the taxes. Let's move away from that kind of uh, tyrannical control. All nice, right? man. Yeah, I'm Cal. Ruma. Ruma. Pleasure nice to meet you, Ruma. Man. Well, let me get uh, give you some pamphlets then, man. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as far as, well, look, well, I don't know how much you can tell me, but like, Illum like Illuminati, like, like as far as the government really wants to take control over everyone, the things that are really going on, 9-11, they did some things that like, were caused by the government, like <laughs> Ebola. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Do you feel threatened by Ebola? Yeah. Mm, I do. <laughs> tell, 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 tell me about some Ebola. It's not your... your uh, it's not very contagious at all. Uh, versus like all the d diseases and viruses out there, like getting a cold, is, you're more likely to get a cold than you are getting Ebola. Uh, these sort of things, um, it's not. It's mostly like a fear campaign. Like when's the last time like mad cow disease? Uh, what's it like white 2 k scare? There's right. a lot of scares that they kind of put out there to uh, to keep your gets under that control. Because of course, when you're kind of scared, when you're fearful, government likes to step in and says, we'll be the ones to protect you. When it's government themselves who are creating these kind of uh, problems exactly. to begin with, right? Exactly. Um, you can kind of look at 9-11, um, for example. Uh, so in terms of, um, if you say everyone has a right to defend themselves, right? Everyone has a right from, from the initiation of force. People look at these, these people overseas came and attacked the United States for no reason. Um, 16 out of the 17 hijackers came from Saudi Arabia. None of them came from Afghanistan or from Iraq. Uh, I think one did, but the rest were came from Saudi Arabia. So what's going on in Saudi Arabia? The United States gives millions of dollars to their government that terrorizes their own people. So for them, they feel, well, they have a right to self-defend, and this is why they attack the United States. Not saying any of that stuff is justified, but we want to look back to what causes a lot of this stuff. Invariably, you'll find the United States government initiating a lot of these conflicts by... Uh, by now, <laughs> let me say one thing. Is it 100% is it true that, that what 9-11 really was it, was, it was, it was basically planned so people can get even richer than what happened? Because I heard um, the guy that owned the building, basically something happened with the administration, I guess Bush administration, whatever happened, and, and the guy, basically, he had to help. He had to help the guy out again. So they basically bombed part of the building. Like, it was the bomb one building, and then like, like the, um, the, the the plane hit one of them. Right. So basically, the money kind of doubled because it was more than one disaster, more than one thing that happened at once. All right. So you're asking, is it uh, plausible for the United States to attack its own people? Yes. Uh, well, you, you look at the war on drugs. What is that but an attack on people uh, who uses vices, victimless crimes? Uh, it's an attack on self-ownership, right? I own my own body. Only I get to decide what goes in there or not, right? right. No one else. But government takes the opposite position and say, no, you do not own your own body, neither do you. We, politicians, get to decide what you can put in there. But of course, you can't tell politicians the same thing, right? So if you're looking for evidence in which government is controlling, there's a lot of evidence for that. All right. I see, it, uh, I see it. Right, like in, in maybe in the uh, World Trade Center, maybe it could be inconclusive. Maybe it's sometimes difficult to point out whether there are other involvements. Um, maybe, maybe I'm not quite sure, but we already have ample enough evidence to show otherwise that government has uh, tyrannized a lot of people. Right, mm -hmm. the United States government, for example, itself has murdered over 30 million people since World War II. What? The United States government alone. 
That includes all now, the wars. Now, now, as far as what kind of murder, you're talking about like cops? Uh, cops, is more, you're eight times more likely to be murdered by a cop than a terrorist. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? I, yeah, I know that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so there we, we already have evidence, right? right. Um, and that should be enough to, to go against government, to, uh, to understand the argument against government that they don't care about human life, they don't care about right, value. Uh, it's all about know. money. Yeah, it's all about money for them, it's all about control. Uh, for you, they look at us nothing as tax slaves. This is Virginia as a tax farm for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and stealing your wealth, your productivity, your labor, right? Nearly half of your income stolen through taxes, stolen. right? Mm -hmm. You're forced to pay for Social Security, for example. You never gave consent to that. You never signed a contract, but you're forced when you're a baby to pay for something. When it's time for you to retire, there'll be nothing left for you, right? right? So yeah, it's all about control. It's all about illusion. It's all about making you believe that you need political rulers, that you need government, that government will be there to protect you from the boogeyman that they themselves created. I mean, you could look at um, World War II, uh, Pearl Harbor, for example. They knew in advance that uh, those planes were coming. They knew, they, they instigated it, because they, they were trying to instigate Germany to go into war with them, but Germany doesn't want to fight two fronts, so they were able to avoid being uh, pushed into that. But of course, they're allied with Japan, and they can get Japan to initiate the war, uh, that will bring in Germany. And the way they initiated Japan to bring, in, uh, bring them into the war was by uh, doing an oil embargo on them, right, by uh, uh, freezing their uh, assets and their accounts, uh, pushing them to the point. It's kind of like uh, if I want to get into a fight with you, I want to make it look like you started the fight, right? So like secretly I'm going to elbow you and then you start up, but everyone's going to look at you thinking like maybe you started, but they don't know I started, right? right, I right. They know the real story behind it. Right. That's what the United States did to Japan so they can get into war. So they sacrificed... Uh, like thousands of lives there on Pearl Harbor, on Hawaii. So, uh, can, can it they? It would have been defense either way if really going with that logic. Say so again? You, it would have been defense either way. Because we knew we would have defended ourselves better. So therefore, it's defense. It's defense against another army. Which is the exact same thing you're trying to say, but you're not saying as a... No, no, alright, so he wants to say that it's a defense of allies. Uh, the United States entry in World War I caused World War II to happen. You look in the historical example of what happened to wars in Europe, every time there's uh, one larger uh, state, they all ally together and bring it down and all the boundaries go back in the same way. And World War II finally have a clear-cut winner because now the United States, and the precedent in history has never occurred, now they've entered the war, now there's a clear-cut winner, now you're able to put down all the other states, that, you know, the, the Axis, uh, and now there's a loser involved, right? Uh, and there's reparations, uh, the Weimar Republic, uh, there's uh, inflation, of uh, rule burrs of uh, worthless money going on. So the United States created the stage for World War II to occur. But the question was, would, would the United States ever consider uh, attacking its own people for its own ends? No. And that's where we're, we're going. And that's what we're saying about Pearl Harbor. He doesn't think so, and that's perfectly fine, we can address that. But here's the examples where they have, right? Uh, that, was, that, was its, that was its own. Well, you're, you're coming into a different conversation, and we can invite this one in a second. We're going to finish yeah. up with this, and that'll be fun. And so, like, the war on drugs is a great, great, great example for that, right? right. Uh, again, you already have this evidence to show that, yeah, they don't care about your life. They don't value human beings. Uh, it's all about control. All right, well, you're not attacking them. You're, you're basically saying... We could go into this one second. I want to wrap this up. Yeah, well, uh, well, one more question. What, 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 what place would you recommend going besides America at the point that the government is going to like fall or break down? What, what do we do then? Like, yeah, what, 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 where, where, should, where should people go? Where should people do? Uh, well, uh, secession. We people talk. Secession is, is inevitable, right? Uh, it happens uh, to USSR. Uh, it inevitably happens to, to every empire. Uh, it inevitably will happen here as well. Uh, but secession begins not just rejecting uh, uh, government, it re rejecting the notion that strangers should have that kind of control over your life. Politicians, political rulers, that's where secession begins. Rejecting the very notion that strangers should have uh, control over half your income. That they, they have claim and ownership over your body and they can tell you what you can and cannot do with it, right? Uh, so it, it starts with uh, rejecting of uh, politics, rejecting of government, rejecting of political rulers. How about revolution? Uh, how about an evolution, right? Uh, <laughs> We had many revolutions, and we just, uh, nothing ever changes. It just reboots the matrix, right? Uh, you, you have a violent revolution, what will we have learned? How to, how to initiate force, nothing about peaceful parenting, nothing about community, nothing about values, nothing about uh, uh, heading into a better direction of the values that we already share for nonviolence, and in that direction, right? So at the end of the day, it's kind of like we're kind of fucked? Say again? So at the end of the day, we're kind of fucked? We're kind of uh, no, not necessarily. We, we can start off uh, anew. Uh, I don't use violence in my day-to-day -day life to solve problems. Let's start there, mm. right? Let's let's start there as a community. Let's start as uh, ostracizing the government and turning towards one another here 
as individuals and in the opposite direction, right? Uh, I'm not describing for utopia, I want there to be problems, but at least we'll find a plurality of nonviolent ways right. to solve that problem. Right, the government only knows how to solve problems at gunpoint. Right, just stealing from you, yeah, threatening well, you. Um, but violence does it, it means more than non-violence. Uh, well, basically, violence, violence can get anything you want, anything done. Right, but it has long-term consequences. It does. Right, um, just like uh, the way they take, tricked your parents into signing up for Social Security was telling, oh, it's only going to cost this much the first year. Uh, of course, the politician who makes that claim is going to be out of office four years later, and then the debt starts to grow, and then they kick off the debt to the next generation, to the next generation, well, and finally that's it's you. That, that you don't get getting kicked down like like if someone dies then their that that gets passed on to the child or whatever. Yeah, the yeah. government is just trying right to do that a lot, especially stealing uh, I guess inheritance tax, right? Fifty four percent of the stuff your parents want to bestow down to your own children, they well, like I, to steal nearly half of that. So 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 the inheritance they tax that. They tax that too. Yeah, that's crazy, right? That's crazy. Yeah, they steal that. All right. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I told I told this is what you want to hear. <laughs> I told this is what you want to hear. <laughs> Josh, you hear this too. So, and, and that's uh, what many of us here in Richmond have uh, gathered. We've been doing this for, uh, I guess, two years now. We want to go in that direction, uh, a free society based on consent. Remember, there exists no factual evidence you can yeah, show me. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yo, I, I, <laughs> you, you convinced me. All right, man. Uh, yeah.